Hi, it's Gadget UK here again. Um, this time I'm looking at this um, A520 modulator. Now, you'll see one of my very, very early videos. I did repair one of these. Um, it was the NTSC PAL um, encoder chip inside. There's a Motorola chip in there that fails. It's quite common and you lose a colour or it gets a strange like, pink or green tinge to the picture and stuff. Um, but the reason I got this, I spent ages searching high and low for one of these 23 pin um, sort of D-type uh, you know, connectors here. Um, I forget the actual, what it's actually class does now. Um, yeah, I think it's D-type, anyway, it's 23 pin, and that's an unusual amount of pins, um, and they're just damn near impossible to find these. Um, I think there was a seller somewhere in Canada or the States or something, they worked at about 15 quid or something each, it was ridiculous. Um, but then it dawned on me, there's loads of these modulators knocking around, and I started to think, well, maybe I could actually use one of these, um, feed, you know, my wire. <coughs> there was to go out to my GBS 8220 um, VGA upscaler. Um, out of the side of it or something. So that's what I'm going to do. Now you can see there's a chip, someone's already chipped that at some point. So I think what I'm going to do is I'm going to just extend that a little bit and I'll perhaps feed the wires through that part there and they'll just come out the back. Um, so the idea being I can just plug this into the back of either my 1200 or my 500 um, or 500 plus and then just plug that into the nearby um, GBS uh, 8220 uh, upscaler. So we'll whip the lid off here, uh, these just prise apart typically, you, you can sometimes do it with your fingers if you're careful, just got to go around side, you know, each side, um, might need to get the screwdriver onto this, it's a bit stiff actually, um, but there's just like little plastic posts inside that clip into the top part of the lid and you can just prise it open, uh, just be careful you don't damage the edge, but it's pretty beat up, you can see it's pretty dirty, I'll clean this up, it should, those, all these marks should come off and it should look good as new. Um, clean all the dirts out of these vents and things um, but I'm going to leave this functional in the sense that you know you still be able to use the uh, you know video out and the uh, you know the composite um, and RF um, should be able to just use the you know the RGB pins uh, red green blue and then the sync uh, pins I think they probably need merging together and feeding through resistor I'll, I'll show you that um, in a minute when it gets it but it's important because the um, the sink um, on, that's out on um, the, the, the Amiga is something like 4.3 or 4.6 volts, I think. And the GBS8220 upscaler I'm using um, apparently is not um, 5 volt tolerant on the IO pins, you know, it'll only accept up to 3.3 volts. So you've got to add a resistor in series. I think it, the article I read is a very good article, I'll link, down to, uh, link to it down below. The article suggests 680 ohms, so that's what I'm going to go with. So I'll just give you a quick look at the internals here before I reassemble this. Um, I've connected the ground onto this Motorola uh, chip here, the PAL uh, NTSC encoder. Um, I think it's, uh, it's like one, two, three, four, six. Six from the top left there. Um, I don't know how many pins that is. It's, yeah, it's easy to just count six pins from the top left hand side, that's your ground. Um, and on the bottom side there, the second pin, pin two actually, from the notch, so it's pin two through a 680 ohm resistor um, is my yellow wire going to my uh, combined sink, you know, composite sink. Um, and then there's three resistors down here, um, and you've got green, blue, red um, in that order from, on those three resistors. Assuming you've got the same revision and modulator. Um, so all I'm going to do is I've just cut a little hole out there. It's not very clean. I can file that down a little bit later. Um, but as you can see, I'm, I can just slide the wires one by one into that cavity there. Um, and you can route them in such a way that they all sort of come out here and then you can get the lid back on without anything being compressed or you know restricted etc it could perhaps do with the grommet there but um i've tested this it works as a normal modulator as well um i did isolate the connections under here originally just to see if there's any difference there on the picture quality it, you know w w the fact that you've got the modulator in parallel with the outputs doesn't make a difference at all i mean it may well do uh, a very 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 low level but there's certainly no visible um, difference um, as far as I can tell so we'll just get the lid back on there now um, I'll clean it up and uh, I'll show you the uh, end working result so here we go is the final assembled result you can see I've stuck a sticker on here the RGB S uh, just so it's obvious what it is um, and it is to me but you never know and we've still got the um, you know the standard functionality here they've tested that it works you've got composite you know this will provide composite out I don't know about RF I've not tested that I'm not interested in that at all really so I'll connect this up to the 1200 here um, it just plugs here, uh, ignore that disc there, it's an awful bloody film, I thought, oh, I watched Phantom Menace again, you know, getting back into all the Star Wars hype at the moment, uh, it's an awful film, it really is, uh, I watched the first 20 minutes and switched it off, I will go back to it later, there are some good bits in it, I'm sure. 
So all connected up there now, and one thing you'll note that's different from when I did this on the Atari ST, if I switch the monitor on, it powers the uh, box. What I did is um, ran a fly lead out the back, took the, you know, took the LCD panel apart, and run a fly lead out the back and tapped into one of the 5 volt lines on there. This only pulls about 400 milliamps as far as I can gather. So uh, it seems alright, you know, the monitor's fine, as you can see, there's no signal. If I now switch the Amiga on, sorry, I know the camera's going all over the place here. And hopefully, all being well, once we get past the uh, black boot screen there. Uh, Yeah, so you know you can see so I can see some banding there on the LCD on the the LCD viewfinder in the camera. You know, it's like little lines scrolling up the screen, but to the naked eye, it's very stable. Um, it looks all right. It looks all right. Um, I have also done another mod to this. Uh, you might just be able to see down here where the regulator, you know, pulls the pack well, converts the, drops the five volts down to three point three. There's a, an SMD cap there. I removed that on the output uh, of the three point three side and stuck a 22 microfarad tantalum on there. Um, I'll put an art a link to the article that led me to that down below. I think it was Ian Steadman. Um, he's done a load of research into this, you know, not really research, but he's, you know, studied one of these, got all this test equipment connected up to it, and connected up to an Amiga like this, and worked out what needs to be done, including actually, and I've got to thank him for that, the, the resistor, um, to drop the C-Sync. Um, you know, I think you need a 680 ohm resistor in there as well. So um, it is dead straightforward, that's the only sort of active component you need really. But in summary, you know, like I say, the, the red, green and blue are just connected to, I think it's pins 2, 3 and 4 on the, uh, you know, the 15, uh, the 23 pin uh, D-type connector there. Ground just connects to a suitable ground in there, there's quite a few of the pins that are connected to ground. And then your C-Sync, in my case here is the yellow, which goes to the fourth pin along here on the connector. It's going through that 680 ohm resistor. So yeah, I mean, this could be better. I've got a bit of heat shrink tube in there. That's not a bit of insulation. So if I was going to do this better, I could perhaps, you know, encapsulate the whole lot. And another way of uh, uh, improvement really would be to use some shielded wire. Um, you know, but it's such a short wire anyway. And as you can see, I do get a very stable picture. Uh, aside from the fact that the, um, on the capture here, I can see the little lines coming down. But I mean, if I load a game now, let's just load uh, Bubble Bobble. Got some good colors on that game. There you go, so you can see that's looking pretty sweet. Really nice, clean image there. Um, you do get, I don't know if you notice on the desktop, you get some weird artifacts, uh, not really artifacts, but compression issues with some of the uh, the stuff on the desktop. I don't know why. It you don't seem to notice it in any games and things. The games are, you know, the graphics are, look fantastic. And look at the colours there. Superb, absolutely superb. Anyway, I thought you'd find that interesting. Thanks for watching. I'll see you soon.